So, yeah, so in left, we have the character sheet. Upper right, we've got the map. Uh, we're mostly going to be going through pre-run and the initial adventure. Um, so, the way it's going to work is we build the character. Uh, we go through the rules and build the character. And um, we start off on the adventure. Now, if he dies, we start right back at the beginning. So, the longer we go through the game, you know, the further back we have to go to back to the beginning until we finally get through all the books. Um, I know there's at least 12. I have number 12, I know. And I have 1 through 9 and 10's coming in the mail. So, um, yeah, this is going to be... Oh, what's it called? Uh, no saves. <laughs> Old school style adventure. But, you know, that's the thing about choose your own adventure. You could do, uh, have the same adventure, but go through it, you know, completely different another time. Yeah, hardcore mode. There you go. Um, but, you know, is there any other way for a game from the 80s? <laughs> this was printed in 1984 uh, when this first one came out. They actually ported it to a video game, but it was probably text based, choose your own adventure with like the images, but that was on the ZX Spectrum. So that was pre IBM compatible computers as we have them today. Um. But as far as being able to make choices, so the way this will work is you would put in... I'll just do it for example. A hashtag. And then let's say there's a choice of going left or right. So your vote is for left. Hashtag left. You see the votes come up on there. It can display up to three at a time and it's going to show uh, the highest vote on the top. And I figure, as we build the character, I will fill out the left side as well. And actually, one of the cool things I plan to do, um, when I get affiliate, I can get subscribers, and I've designed this to be a scroll that will unfurl from both ends, and the name of the person will be here as a subscriber. So the bearer of this scroll, namely, you, name, will be, is an initiate of the disciplines of the Kai. So I thought that would look kind of cool to have that scroll out effect. Because I have um, graphics of all the different images on the page. Alright. You are the sole survivor of a devastating attack on the monastery where you were learning the skills of the Kai Lords. You swear vengeance on the Dark Lords for the massacre of the Kai warriors. And with a sudden flash of insight, you know what you must do. You must set off for a perilous journey to the capital city to warn the king of the terrible threat that faces his people. For you are now the last of the Kai. You are now Lone Wolf. So this was written by Joe Dever and illustrated by Gary Chalk. I love his art. To Melania. So here's how like the old character sheet was set up. So you'd actually... And you can see how we're, we've written on it. Because, <laughs> like, everything you need is, like, as long as you had a pencil, you could play this game, like, anywhere. Didn't need anything else. Alright, story so far. In the northern land of Summerland, it has been the custom for many centuries to send the children of the warrior lords to the monastery of Kai. There they are taught the skills and disciplines of their noble fathers. The Kai monks are masters of their arts, and the children in their charge love and respect them in spite of the hardships of their training. For one day, when they have finally learnt the secret skills of the Kai, they will return home, return to their homes equipped in mind and body to defend themselves against the constant threat of war from the Dark Lords to the, of the West. In olden times, during the age of the Black Moon, the Dark Lords waged war on Summerland. The conflict 
was a long and bitter trial of strength that ended in victory for the summer lending at the great battle. I'm going to have to pause ever so often when I reach unique names like this. Making Gorge. I'm going to go with Macon Gorge. For the great battle of Macon Gorge. King Ulnar and the allies of Durinor broke the Dark Lord armies at the pass of Moitura and forced them back into the bottomless abyss of the Macon Gorge. Macon Gorge? Is that what I said? Macon Gorge. Vashna, mightiest of the Dark Lords, was slain upon the sword of King Ulnar, called the Summer Sword the Sword of the Sun. Since that age, Dark Lords have vowed vengeance upon Summerland and the House of Ulnar. Now it is in the morning of the Feast of Faemarn, when all the Kai Lords are present at the monastery for the celebrations. Suddenly, a great cloud comes over the western skies. So many are the numbers of black-winged beasts that fill the sky that the sun is completely hidden. The Dark Lords, ancient enemy of the Summerlanding, are attacking. War has begun. On this faithful morning, you, Silent Wolf, the name given to you by the Kai, have been sent to collect firewood in the forest as a punishment for your inattention in class. As you are preparing to return, you see to your horror a vast cloud of black leathery creatures swoop down and engulf the monastery. Dropping the wood, you race to the battle. That has already begun. In the unnatural dark, you stumble and strike your head on a low tree branch. As you lose consciousness, the last thing you see in the poor light are the walls of the monastery crashing to the ground. Many hours pass before you awake. With tears in your eyes, you now survey the scene of destruction. Raising your face to the clear sky, you swear vengeance on the Dark Lords for the massacre of the Kai warriors. With a sudden flash of realization, you know what you must do. You must set off on a perilous journey to the capital city to warn the king of the terrible threat that now faces his people. For you are now the last of the Kai. You are now the Lone Wolf. Alright, so we're going to go over the game rules. You keep a record of your adventures on the action chart that you will find in the front of this book. For further adventuring, you can copy out the chart yourself or get it photocopied. <laughs> During your training as a Kai Lord, you have developed fighting prowess, combat skill, and physical stamina, endurance. Before you set off in your adventure, you need to measure how effective your training has been. To do this, take a pencil and with your eyes closed, point with the blunt end on the random number table on the last page of this book. If you pick zero, it counts as zero. The first number that you pick from the random number table in this way represents your combat skill. Add 10 to that to the number you picked, and write the total in the combat skills section of your action chart. I.e., if your pencil fell on 4 in the random number table, you would write in the combat skill of 14. When you fight, your combat skill will be pitted against that of your enemy. A high score in this section is therefore very desirable. The second number that you pick from the random number table represents your power, uh, powers of endurance. Add 20 to this number and write the total in your endurance section of your action chart i.e. if your pencil fell on the number 6 on the random number table, you would have 26 endurance points. For this, because it's all single digits, we're going to use a steel d10. If you are wounded in combat, you will lose endurance points. If at any time your endurance points fall to zero, you are dead and the adventure is over. Lost endurance points can be regained during the course of the adventure, but your number of endurance points can never go uh, above the number with which you start your adventure. <laughs> nice. All right. So here are the Kai disciplines. So we're get, we get to choose, I think, one at first. We'll see. Over the centuries, the Kai, monast uh, the Kai monks have mastered the skills of the warrior, these skills are known as the Kai Disciplines, and they are taught to all Kai Lords. You have learned only five of the skills listed below. Okay, so we start with five. Uh, the choice of which five skills these are is for you to make. 
as all of the disciplines will be uh, of use to you at some point on your perilous quest. Pick your five with care. The correct use of the discipline at the right time can save your life. When you have chosen your five disciplines, enter them in the Kai Discipline section of your action chart. All right, so let's go over which ones they have. Because I believe we get more uh, with further adventures, like in book two, we might get an extra one. Camouflage. This discipline enables a Kai Lord to blend in with his surroundings. In the countryside, he can hide undetected among trees and rocks and pass close to an enemy without them being seen. In a town or city, it enables him to look and sound like a native of that area and can help him find shelter or a safe hiding place. Hunting. This skill ensures that a Kai Lord will never starve in the wild. He will always be able to hunt for food for himself except in areas of wasteland and desert. The skill also enables a Kai Lord to be able to move stealthily when stalking his prey. If you choose this skill, write hunting no need for a meal when instructed to eat. This skill may warn so six cents, sorry. This skill may warn a Kai Lord of imminent danger, and may also reveal the true purpose of a stranger or strange object encountered in your adventure. Tracking. This skill enables a Kai Lord to make correct choice of uh, the correct choice of a path in the wild to discover the location of person or object in town or city uh, the location okay. and to read the secrets of footprints or tracks healing this discipline can be used to restore endurance points lost in combat if you possess the skill you may stir restore one endurance point to your total for every numbered section of the book you pass through in which you are not involved in combat. This is only to be used after your endurance has fallen below its original level. Remember that your endurance cannot rise above its original level. If you choose this skill, write healing plus one endurance points for each section without combat. Weapon skill. Upon entering the Kai Monastery, each initiate is taught to master one type of weapon. If weapon skill is to be one of your Kai disciplines, pick a number in the in the usual way from the random number table on the last page of the book, and then find the corresponding weapon from the list below. This is the weapon in which you have skill. When you enter combat carrying this weapon, you add two points to your combat skill. So we have ten weapons to choose from. As a kid, I always loved the art for the broadsword the best. The fact that you are skilled with a weapon does not mean that you set out on adventure carrying that particular weapon. However, you will have opportunities to acquire weapons in the course of your adventures. If you pick the axe, you are lucky enough to be skilled in the one weapon Lone Wolf is carrying from the start of the adventure, explained fully in the equipment section. You cannot carry more than two weapons. If you choose this skill, write weapon skill in blank, plus two combat skill points in the weapons carried on your action chart. Mind Shield. The Dark Lords and many of the evil creatures in the, their command have the ability to attack you using their Mind Force. The Kai Discipline of Mind Shield prevents you from losing any endurance points when subjected to this form of attack. If you choose a skill, write Mind Shield, no points lost when attacked by Mind Blast. Mind Blast. This enables a Kai Lord to attack an enemy using the force of his mind. It can be used at the same time as normal combat weapons, and adds two extra points to your combat skill. Not all the creatures encountered on this adventure will be harmed by Mind Blast. You will be told if a creature is immune. If you choose a skill, write Mind Blast plus two combat skill. Animal Kinship. This skill enables a Kai Lord to communicate with some animals and to be able to guess their intentions of other, the intentions of others. Mind over Matter. Mastery of this discipline enables a Kai Lord to move small objects with his with the powers of his, uh, his powers of concentration. If you successfully complete the mission as set in Book One of Lone Wolf, you may add a further Kai discipline of your choice to your action chart in Book Two. This additional skill, together with your five other skills and any special items that you have picked up in Book One, may be used in the advent next adventure of the Lone Wolf series, which is called Fire on the Water. Equipment. You are dressed in the green tunic and cloak of a Kai initiate. 
you have little with you to arm yourself for survival. All you possess is an axe, not under wep- note under weapons on your action chart, and a backpack containing one meal, note under meals in your action chart. Hanging from your waist is a leather pouch containing gold crowns. To find out how many, pick a number from the random number table. This number equals the number of gold crowns you possess at the start of the adventure. You discover, amongst the smoking ruins of the monastery, a map of Summerland, note under special items on the action chart, using the capital city of Homeguard and the last of Durinur far to the east. In the land of Durinur, my bad. You place the map inside your tunic for safety. You also find one of the following. So uh, n- another 1 through 10 for either a sword, helmet, two meals, a chainmail waistcoat, mace, healing potion, quarterstaff, spear, 12 gold, gold crowns, or a broadsword. Again, to discover which of the above you find, you must pick a number from the random number table and find the corresponding article on the list. Note this on your action chart under the he- heading given in your uh, given in brackets and make a note of any effect it may have on your endurance points. How to carry equipment. Now that you have your equipment, the following list shows you how it should be carried. You don't need to make notes, uh, but you can refer back to this list in the course of your adventure. So, sword is carried in the hand, helmet is worn on the head, food is placed in the backpack. Chamo waistcoat worn on the body, mace carried in the hand, healing potion carried in the backpack, quarterstaff carried in the hand, spear carried in the hand, gold crowns carried the belt pouch, broadsword carried in the hand. How many can you carry? Weapons. Maximum number of two weapons. Uh, backpack items. These must be stored in your backpack. Because space is limited, you may only keep a maximum of eight articles, including meals, in your backpack at any one time. Special items. Special items are not carried in the backpack. When you discover a special item, you will be told how to carry it. Gold crowns. These are always carried in the belt pouch. It will hold a maximum of 50 crowns. Food is carried in your backpack. Each meal counts as one item. Any item that may be uh, of use can be picked up on your adventure and carried in your action chart. Uh, Is given capital letters in text. Okay. Unless you are told is a special item, carry it in your backpack. All right, now how to use your equipment. Weapons. Weapons aid you in combat. You may have the Kai discipline of weapon if you have the we- Kai discipline of weapon skill and the correct weapon. It adds two points to your combat skill. If you enter a combat with no weapons, deduct four points from your combat skill, and fight with your bare hands. If you find a weapon during the adventure, you may pick it up and use it. Remember, you can only carry two weapons at once. Backpack items. During your travels, you will discover various useful items, which you may wish to keep. Remember, you can only carry eight items in your backpack at once. You may exchange or discard them at any point when you are not involved in combat. Special items. Each special item has a particular purpose or effect. You may be told this when the item is discovered, or it may be revealed to you as the adventure progresses. Gold crowns. The local currency is the crown, which is a small gold coin. Gold crowns can be used on your adventure to pay for transport, food, or even as a bribe. Many of the creatures that you will encounter possess gold crowns, or have them hidden in their lairs. Whenever you kill a creature, you may take any gold crowns that it has and put them in your belt pouch. Food. You will need to eat regularly during your adventure. If you do not have any food when you are instructed to eat a meal, you will lose three endurance points. If you have chosen the Kai discipline of hunting as one of your five skills, you will not need to tick off meal when instructed to eat. Healing Potion. This can restore four endurance points to your total when swallowed after combat. There is only enough for one dose. If you discover any other potions during the adventure, you will be told uh, then of their effect. All healing potions are backpack items. All right, rules for combat. There will be occasionally occasions on your adventure when you have to fight an enemy. The enemy's combat skill and endurance points will be given in the text. Lone Wolf's aim 
is in the combat is to kill enemy by reducing his endurance points to zero while losing as few endurance points as possible himself. At the start of a combat, enter lone wolves and the enemy's endurance points in the appropriate boxes in the combat record section of your action chart. The sequence of combat is as follows. Add any extra points gained through your Kai disciplines to your current combat skill total. Subtract the combat skill of your enemy from this total. The result is your combat ratio. Enter it in the action chart. Lone Wolf, combat skill 15, is ambushed by a winged devil, combat skill 20. He is not given the opportunity to evade combat, but must stand and fight uh, as the creature swoops down on him. Lone Wolf has the Kai discipline of Mind Blast, so he adds two points to his combat skill, giving him a total of combat skill of 17. He subtracts the Winged Devil's combat skill from his own, giving him combat ratio of negative 3. Negative 3 is noted on the action chart as the combat ratio. When you have your combat ratio, pick a number from the random number table. Turn to the combat results table on the inside back cover of the book. Along the top of the chart are shown the combat ratio numbers. Find the number that is the same as your combat ratio and the cross, cross and cross reference it with the random number that you have picked. The random numbers appear on the side of the chart. You now have the number of endurance points lost by both Lone Wolf and his enemy in this round of combat. E represents points lost to the enemy. LW represents points lost to Lone Wolf. Take a look at that. Okay, so here's our random number table. Here is the combat ratio, negative 11 to positive 11. So if we roll a 9 and we have a negative 3, so enemy loses 9, lone wolf loses 0. We roll a 1, enemy loses 1, lone wolf loses negative 6. And I'm guessing K means kill. So if we're too outmatched, we will die if we roll low. It's good to know. K automatically kill, lone wolf enemy. There you go. All right, here's an example. The combat ratio between Lone Wolf and the Winged Devil has been established as negative three. In the num if the number taken from the random number table is, as is a six, then the result of the first round of combat is Lone Wolf loses three endurance points, Winged Devil loses six endurance points. On the action chart, mark the changes in the endurance points on the uh, to the participants uh, in the combat. Unless otherwise instructed, or unless you have an option to evade, the next round of combat now starts. Repeat sequences from stage 3. This process of combat continues until the endurance points of either the enemy or lone wolf are reduced to zero, at which point the one with the zero score is declared dead. If lone wolf is dead, the adventure is over. If the enemy is dead, lone wolf proceeds, uh, but with his endurance points reduced. A summary of combat rules appears in the page after the random number table. Evasion of combat. During your venture, you may be given a chance to evade combat. If you have already engaged in a round of combat and decide to evade, calculate the combat for that round in the usual manner. All points lost by the enemy as a result of that round are ignored, but you make your escape. Only Lone Wolf may lose endurance points during that round, but then that is the risk of running away. You may only evade if the text of a particular section allows you to do so. Kai Wisdom. Your mission will be one of great danger, for the Dark Lords and their servants are a cruel and fierce enemy who give and expect no mercy. Use the map on the back cover of the book to help you steer a correct course for the capital. Make notes as you progress through the story, for they will be of great help in future adventures. Many things that you find will aid you during your adventure. Some special items will be of use in future Lone Wolf adventures, and others may be red herrings of no real use at all. So be selective of what you decide to keep. There are many routes to the king, but only one involves a minimum danger. With a wise choice of Kai disciplines and a great deal of courage, any player may be able to complete this, the mission, no matter how weak their initial combat skill or endurance points are. The honor and memory of the Kai lords will go with you on your perilous journey. Good luck. So that's where it starts. So now we have to roll up our character. So let's start with 
combat skill will add 10 to it, but let's roll a d10. Oof. We got a zero. <laughs> Off to a good start. All right. Combat skill. Here it is. So normally it's a 10, but in this game, it's 0 through 9 is how they have it set up. So if you actually look at the random number table, it's all single digits. So that's why in this case, when they were saying choosing 0 through 9, 0 equals 0 as far as um, adding up your stat points. Yeah, normally 0 would be awesome. 0 would be great, because 0 would be 10. Um, yeah. If you pick zero, it counts as zero. So that sucks. So we're starting off at a disadvantage. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Hey, if we die, we can re-roll character. If there is a zero at all. Brad, BB, oh, welcome. Sorry, I didn't see you come in. Uh, so now I'm going to roll four endurance points. So it's 20 to this die. We were bamboozled. Nice. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, we're going to be wanting to evade combat. Things are not looking great for us. We have the minimum. Check your die. All right. Let me try again. That's a one. It's an eight. Five. Eight. Zero. See, normally zero is great. One. And you want to avoid the ones. Eight. One. Oof. Two. Maybe I just need to make it roll more. You can blame me for this. <laughs> I'd forgotten how charming these 80s era random roll stat games were. Nice. Two. I mean... I don't know. These steel ones are usually pretty reliable as far as random. And I've usually had good luck. I mean, this is my set. So. It's more interesting. Who says easy is always the better way. Okay, so now we get to choose five Kai disciplines. So we're between camouflage hunting... Six Sense Tracking Healing, Weapon Skill, Mind Shield Mind Blast, Animal Kinship, Mind Over Matter. So we definitely get an axe to start. Not Avenue, Axe. I can spell, I swear. Challenging. Yeah. So, weapon skill, mind shield, mind blast, mind over matter, animal kin kinship. So, I'm thinking. I don't know. Do y'all have any initial things that y'all like? Considering how low my endurance I might end up needing Healy. Do we have to worry about the combat boost or try to avoid them and spec into a hunting camo? I like a lot of the skills. Yeah, that's the problem is all of them seem interesting. There's none of those that seem like throwaway like a lot of uh, modern stuff. Or at least they're, they're formulated in such a way. I don't know. Sometimes when you have too many options, um, that's a, more of a problem than having a limited amount of options. You can curate them more. We need sixth sense. Yeah, I've always thought sixth sense, sixth sense was very. Like I don't remember ever playing a version because I'm. 
I played this when I was a kid, but um, I don't remember not ever choosing Sixth Sense. So there's one. To start. There are going to be times, I believe, where we have to fight. So the question is... Mind over matter seems interesting. That seems like fun time. I think we need camo for our low stat, and I like mine over matter, Jedi. Yeah, exactly. And see, so then we can start getting into, so, it's interesting because these are a lot more like, um, like a monk-fighter combo, or if you want to think of it like a fighter-psionic combo, because instead of dealing with a lot of magic, they tend to take more of the psionic route, which is interesting. So Mind Over Matter and Sixth Sense will definitely push on the Jedi thing. So, do, I mean, do we want to go full mind to get Mind Shield Mind Blast? Does that seem interesting? That would take up a total of four. So you're saying Camouflage too. So let's grab Camo. Not Zamo, why did I grab an X? I guess they go for it. You're Jean Grey. Nice. Okay. Alright, yeah, let's go full mon full mental. We'll skip like the regular weapon stuff. I mean, we can always get a weapon skill later. Or something else. I think as the books continue, you get more skills, if I remember correctly. I don't think it stops at 6. It might. So, Mind Shield. And... Mind Blast. All right. I like camo or tracking. Yeah, so camo would allow me to either not be seen in the countryside or either... See, there's also... Yeah, okay, I can blend in with people, but then it's like, okay, if I maybe if I meet a native, they're like, oh, you're a native too. Hi, Cora, how are you doing? We have a cat attack here. <laughs> cat Lord! Yeah, we got five. I mean, we can switch out to tracking, but I'm thinking camo since, like you were saying, we were, um... Corey, are you checking on me? Um... So we can hide. So do we want to hide, or do we want to find all of the Aura, you gonna? All right, thank you for the visit. Um, so we can either find all of the possible routes to take, like all the possible hidden paths, or we can stay hidden in case we want to avoid a fight. That's more the direction. So I guess, what do y'all think? Camo is awesome. Okay. So then... Yeah, like we got... Okay. We have an axe. 
dressed in green tunic. All he possesses an axe. A backpack with one meal. So... So, we have meal, axe... Oh, and the random number table of gold crowns. No boost to that, so we either have anywhere between zero and nine. Let's find out. We have seven. All right, we're doing decent there. We have some gold crowns. That's right, we can put special, we can put... Map of Summerland. Okay, and then we get a random number. We're <laughs> random. All right, let's see what we get. Nine. Twelve more gold crowns. Okay, so nothing special, but we definitely got money. So we start off with 12 plus 7, we get 19. We indeed are rich. Super rich. <laughs> Okay. With that, I think we are ready to go. So yeah. Characters up. Here we go. You must make haste for your sense isn't you sense it is not safe to linger in by the smoking remains of the ruined monastery. The black-winged beasts could return at any moment. You must set out for the Summerlin capital of Holmgard and tell the king the terrible news of the massacre, that the whole elite of Kai warriors, save yourself, has been slaughtered. Have been slaughtered. Without the Kai lords to lead her army, Summerlin will be at the mercy of their ancient enemy, the Dark Lords. Fighting back tears tears. You bid farewell to your dead kinsmen. Silently, you promise that their deaths will be avenged. You turn away from the ruins and carefully descend to the steep, descend the steep track. At the foot of the hill, the path splits into two directions. Both lead, lead into large woods. If you wish to take the right path into the woods, turn to 85. If you wish to follow the left track, turn to 275. If you wish Wish to use your Kai Discipline of Sixth Sense, turn to 141. Hey, look. Sixth Sense, right at the start. I'm thinking we should use Sixth Sense. So, 141. So, these pages aren't numbered normally. The, the numbers are up here in the corner like that. So, 141. Your sixth sense has warned you that some of the creatures that attack the monastery are searching the two paths for any survivors of their raid, but you can avoid both tracks by making your way through the undergrowth of the woods. So if you wish to head south, turn to 56. If you wish to cut through the heavier foliage towards northeast, turn to 333. So, yeah, <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Brad, the way we're doing uh, voting if for choose your own adventure kind of style is you put the hashtag in the choice that you want. 
So I think I'm actually going to clear this out sooner. So, because it normally clears out after two minutes. So that's a little long. Don't kind of, that's fine. Just giving you the opportunity so you know how that works. Settings. Survey timeout after seconds. So let's set 90. Okay, so it's reset. Um, so if y'all want to vote, south or northeast. Tag Northeast, okay. <clears throat> there way to ah, I can zoom in. Still zoom is in there. Oh, there we go. That's how you get. Sorry, I'm trying to zoom in on the map here. Okay. I die a lot in these books. <laughs> That's fine. So we are going to go. We've had... A little bit of time, so one vote. Ah, oh, there it goes. Turned off. So perfect timing. We are going to go northeast. So we're going to turn to page 333. We're going to travel a bit like that. Mm. There we go. 333. You have cut your way through the thick undergrowth for nearly half an hour when you hear the beat of wings high above the trees. Looking up, you can just make out the shape of a crown approaching from the north. It is one of the monsters that attacked the monastery, and on its back are two gray-skinned creatures armed with long spears. These are mountain gaiaks, evil servants of the Dark Lords, full of hatred and malice. Many centuries ago, their ancestors were used by the Dark Lords to build the infernal fertile city of Helgedad, which lies in the volcanic wasteland beyond the Durn Crag range of mountains. The construction of the city was long and torturous, and only the strongest of the Gaiaks survived. The heat and poisonous atmosphere uh, survived the heat and poisonous atmosphere of the Helgedad. Hidden by the trees, you freeze, keeping absolutely still as the Kron passes overhead and disappears towards the south. When you are sure it is gone, you move off once again into the forest. Turn to page 131. We saw them, but they didn't see us, so. Maybe would we would have had to fight some right off the bat. So, so this illustration, so this is what we see apparently. You have covered about a quarter mile of a mile when you hear shouting and a noise like thunderclap overhead. Edging nearer, you soon make out a clearing that you recognize to be the site of the ruins of Raumas, an ancient forest temple. 
A war party of Gaiax, some 25 or 30 strong, are attacking the ruins from all sides. Many more of the Gaiax are dead or dying among the broken pillars of marble, but still they assault whatever is hidden inside. Suddenly, a bolt of blue light rips through the front ranks of Gaiax, sending the armor-clad creatures tumbling in all directions. A Gaiax, taller than the others and dressed from head to foot in black chainmail, curses as at his troops as he whips them forward with a barbed flail. With weapon ready, you move to the edge of the clearing under cover of the thick foliage and try to catch a glimpse of the defenders. To your amazement, the ruins are being defended by a young man no older than yourself. You recognize his sky-blue robes embroidered with stars. He is a young theurgist of the Magician's Guild of Toran, an apprentice of, in magic. Five Gaiax charge towards forward, their spears raised to stab their apprentice as he hurriedly retreats deeper into the ruins. You see him, tur you see him turn and raise his left hand just before a bolt of blue flame shoots from his fingertips into the snarling Gaiax soldiers. Close to where you are hidden, you see a Gaiax scuttle past and climb one of the pillars of the temple. He has a long curved dagger in his mouth, and he is about to jump on the young wizard standing below. Thank you, Judith. So if you wish to shout a warning to the, uh, to the wizard, turn to 241. If you wish to run forward and attack the Gaiac when he jumps, turn to 55. If you wish to pick up a chunk of temple marble and throw it at the Gaiac's head, turn to 302. If you would rather turn and leave the battle area and run back into the woods, turn to 101. So the question is, are we some kind of brave or not? We can shout a warning. We can attack. We can try to throw it at his head, or we can just take care of our own hides and run off. 302. Using the mind over matter. I doubt it's mind over matter in this case. It's probably going to be, because otherwise I'd say you'd have to have 302 if you'd like to use your mind over matter to throw the object. 302. Otherwise, no, we physically have to pick it up and chunk it at him. So, chance of missing... Um... I don't know. Eat. This is a tricky decision. So, are we going to hashtag shout? Are we going to hashtag attack? Are we going to hashtag throw? Or hashtag leave? So make your vote while the Korra monster goes by. May I help you? I'm voting more towards Yeet. We have one boat to throw. Yeah. Yes, hello. Thank you for the kisses. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Come on, I can't see. Uh... I was just no. My my vote's going to be towards eating, eat as in throw. Sorry. So I'm wanting to throw a rock. Seems you are as well. So you know what? Let's throw the rock. Let's do it. Page three hundred two. Uh, I 
Maybe I can set up this stuff. Oh, let's do it. Let's There we go. Make sure desktop audio is set to the correct location. In case anyone follows. We roll the dice. Gods decide. Oh, pick a number from the random number table. Oh, here's where it comes. So I have to roll. See if I hit him or not. Ooh, we rolled a one. That's probably not going to be good. One ten. You take quickly take aim and hurl the rock at the Gaiac's head as hard as you can. To your horror, the creature ducks, and the rock arcs harmlessly over the back. You must act immediately to save the wizard. So, we turn to page... So we're fighting him anyway. Turn to page 55. So much for that plan. Just as the Gaiac makes his leap, you race forward and strike out with your weapon, knocking the creature away from the young wizard's back. You jump onto the struggling Gaiac and strike again. Due to the surprise of your attack, Add four points to your combat skill for the duration of this fight, but remember to duck duct it again as soon as the fight is over. So, we fight. Alright, Cora. You're gonna need to yeet him somewhere else. Alright, so... Our EP for this is 14. Enemy's EP is 9. Oh, but we do have... Mine Blast. So we get to add 2. So it's going to be 16, which means our combat ratio is... Plus seven. Whoops. There it comes. All right. So now, random number. It worked out a lot better than it definitely could have. Alright, so 5. So with a plus 7 and a 5, so he loses 11 and I lose 2. He has an endurance of 9. So one whack, he dead. But we lose 2. So how about 18 slash? That way we can keep track of our max. Nice, okay. We won our first combat. So if we win, turn to page 325. Oh, this is going to be weird. Upon seeing you emerge from the woods, the Gaiac officer shouts, Agat! Agat! To his cowering troops who flee the ruins and run to the safety of the forest. Shaking his mailed fist at you, the black clad Gaiac screams, Raneg! Rogag! Ak! Orgad! Akak! <laughs> Rogag! Gaj! Before leaving. Surveying the scene of the battle, you count over 15 Gaiac dead, lying among the broken pillars of Ramas. The young wizard wipes his brow and walks towards you, his hand extended in friendship. 
turn to 349. All right. So far, so good. They now know that we are alive, and they probably recognize our green outfit. He is a young, blonde-haired youth with deep, brooding eyes. His face is lined with exhaustion and a grime of battle and his long, sky-blue robes bear evidence of living rough in the wilds. He shakes your hand and bows. My eternal thanks, Kai Lord. My powers are nearly drained. Had you not come to my aid, I fear I would have ended my days atop a Gaiac lance. He is weak and unsteady on his feet. You take his arm and sit him down upon a fallen pillar, where you listen intently to what he has to say. My name is Bainden. I am a journeyman, to the Brotherhood of the Crystal Star, which is the Magician's Guild of Toran. My guildmaster has sent me to your monastery with this urgent message. He removed a vellum envelope from inside his robe and hands it to you. As you see, I have opened the letter and read its contents. When the war started, I was on the highway with two traveling companions. The Kron attacked us, and we lost each other in the forest during our escape. The letter is a warning to the Kai Lords that the Dark Lords have mustered a vast army beyond the Durncrag range. The Guildmaster urges the Kai to cancel the celebrations of Faemarn and prepare for war. I fear we were betrayed, says Bainden, his head bowed in sorrow. One of my order, a brother called Vonatar, had explored the forbidden mysteries of the Black Art. Ten days ago, he had denounced the Brotherhood and killed one of our elders. He has since disappeared. It is rumored that he now aids the Dark Lords. You tell Bainden what has happened to the monastery, and of your mission to warn the king. Silently, he removes a gold chain from around his neck and hands it to you. On the chain is a small crystal star pendant. It is a symbol of my Brotherhood, and we are both truly, and we are both truly brother, brothers in this hour of darkness. Is a talisman of good fortune. May it protect you on the road ahead. You thank him. Place the chain around your neck and slip the crystal star inside your shirt. So we get a crystal star out of it. We will get her and <laughs> all right. Uh... Bainden bids you farewell. We must leave this place, lest the Gaiacs return with more of their lonesome kind to push put us put an end to us. I must must return to my guild. I bid you farewell, my brother. May the luck of the gods go with you. Turn to two ninety three. I have a feeling that's going to come in handy later. Especially this early on. With a wave of his hand, Bainden leaves the ruins, and you continue your mission. Pushing on through the thick woods ahead. You have not gone far when you realize several pairs of yellow eyes are watching you from the undergrowth to your left. Suddenly, a black arrow skims the top of your head. It is a Gaiac ambush, and you must run as fast as you can to escape it. Uh oh. Yeah, hope we get to use it indeed. Alright, 281. Alright, things are on. We've let them know we are alive, so they're gonna be after us. As you race through the trees, you can hear the horrible cackle of the Gaiacs close behind you. Soon the trees start to thin out, and directly ahead, you can see a rocky hillside. If you break cover and climb up the hill, turn to 311. If you change direction and continue to run through the forest, Turn to 77. Ooh. Forest or hill? What do y'all think? Hashtag forest, hashtag hill.
Okay, you thinking forest? Might expose ourselves on the hill, I guess. You know what? That's exactly my thought. But they might be in the forest. They might be. But then also remember there was those ones that were flying above in the sky. So we might even expose ourselves to one of those flying mounts. It's my... Yeah, I'm on 5G. So, I don't know. Let's go forest then. 77. The mountain Gaiax are unaccustomed to pursuing their prey through forests, and you soon outdistance them, until finally the sound of their grunts and curses disappear completely. When you are satisfied that they have given up the chase, you stop for a few minutes to catch your breath and check your equipment. With the memory of your ruined monastery still blazing in your mind, you gather up your meager belongings and push on. Turn to page 19. Looks like we survived. Apparently this old book has uh, spots it prefers to go to. There we go. Just ahead through the tall trees, you can see clumps of dark red gallow brush, a thorny briar with sharp crimson barbs. The common name for this forest weed is called sleep tooth, for the thorns are very sharp and can make you feel weak and sleepy if they scratch your skin. You can avoid the sleep tooth by returning to the track, turning 272 or you can push through the briars deeper into the forest, turn to 119. If you have the Kai discipline of tracking, turn to 69. Well, we don't have tracking. Well, thanks for that. Uh, so, oof. Phone's freaking out. Just trying to make it calm down a little. Okay. So, either we avoid or we try to push through. It sounds dangerous to try and push through. So, we either are on, back on a track, back on the path, I'm guessing. Yeah, and like, what if we run into someone and we're like weak? So we'd probably get like a minus to our EP, I'm guessing, if we fight someone while we're weak like that. Hashtag avoid. Okay. Yeah, we outran them, so it should be fine. So let's see, we're in the forest, so... Green. Got green light going. All right, we're going to avoid. Turn to page 272. I love this. It's like this. These old books have the smell of like vanilla, I think is this the term. Keeping a watchful eye on the sky above, you move quickly along the track. You recall that this route leads to Fogwood, a small cluster of huts that have been used by a family of charcoal burners for nearly 50 years. After 20 minutes, you reach the edge of a clearing where the huts are grouped in a small circle. There is no sign of the usual mist 
of wood smoke which gives Fogwood its apt name, and the huts are unusually quiet. If you have the Kai discipline of tracking, you may turn to page 134. If you do not possess the skill, you prepare your weapon and stealthily approach the huts to turn to page 305. Well, looks like we have one choice here. So, to put it in perspective... Do they have that on the map is the question. Doesn't it? Oops. Sorry. That's Toran. And this is Fogwood, so it must be too small of a town to put on a map. So, I would say we are right about Mia, I guess. I say we're right about there. So, but let's go in. 305. Whoops. Hitting buttons on me. Okay. So, through the open doorway of the first hut, you can see the body of a charcoal burner lying face down on the rough stone floor. He has been murdered, stabbed in the back by a spear. All his furniture and belongings have been smashed and broken, and not one piece remains intact. This is the evil handiwork of Gaiax, without any doubt for they delight in the destruction of all things. A quick check of the other huts reveals a similar story of murder and wreckage. In the last hut you search, you discover a Gaiac spear, proof of your suspicions. You may keep this weapon if you wish. More determined than ever now to succeed in your mission, you continue along the track. You know what? Why not? Unless you all think there's a particular reason we shouldn't keep the spear... Hashtag <laughs> Right? Nice. Yeah, I keep the spear. Is it updating? Oh, there it goes. Didn't want to update for half a second. Alright, so we turn to page 105. Oh. In the distance, perched on the branch of an old oak tree, is a jet black raven. Oh. If we have the Kai Discipline of Animal Kinship, you may call this bird by turning it to 298. If you do not possess the skill, turn to 335. That is one we do not have. So, let us turn to 335. Okay, keep seeing all these options. Makes it so cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, you never know what you're going to be able to do next time around. Yeah, they definitely... That's the nice thing about Choose Your Own Adventure is you add the, the RPG element and the replayability goes way up. So, as you approach, the blackbirds fly off above the trees and soon disappear from view. You search the tree on which it was perched, but find nothing unusual. Rather than waste any more precious time, you continue off along the track. Oh, so we might have actually gotten something from them if we had the discipline. So turn to page 121. I just keep on saying page, even though it's not actually pages. Just out of habit.
All right. So this is going to be this illustration over here. Ravens. Oh, okay. So that's the raven we saw earlier is now on this dude's arm. After a few minutes walking, you see a stranger clad in red standing in the center of the track ahead. He has his hood, or his, his back towards you, my bad, and his head is covered by the hood of his robes. Perched on his outstretched arm is the black raven you saw earlier. If you wish to call the stranger, turn to 342. If you wish to approach the stranger cautiously, turn to 309. If you would rather draw your weapon and attack, turn to 283. Ugh. So it comes down to if this dude is an enemy or a friend. So approach cautiously, that's what you're thinking. Ominous. Ominous. <laughs> yeah. Approach cautiously. You know what? Let's do it. Oh dear. You have taken less than ten paces when the raven squawks a warning to the stranger. Turning to face you, the robed creature utters a piercing scream that freezes your blood and grips your stomach with fear and panic. It is a Vordak, a lieutenant of the Dark Lords, and one of the undead. Within seconds, a host of Gaiaks appear at its side and attack you. You fright bla bravely, but you are greatly outnumbered. The last thing you remember is the icy grip of the Vordak's skeletal fingers as they close around your throat. Your life and your mission end here. Yep. That can happen. Full of pitfalls. Sometimes there are just instant death items in here, especially when you're talking about the big boys. So, we're back to the beginning. We get to roll up a new character anyways. Let's get another shot at the combat skills and experience points. How about that? <laughs> yeah, so old school is a lot more abrupt, especially when you're talking choose your own adventure. I mean, at least with RPG style choose your own adventure, you have instances where you can fight your way out of winning and losing. With a lot of the old school chooser and adventure, it's just like, you keep going or you're dead. So. We shall remove the Gaiac Spear. Keep the meal. Uh, we'll have to reroll for the coins. We'll have to re-roll for combat skill and endurance points, and then this. Alright. So, let's start with... Exactly, yeah. So let's roll for combat skill. Give me nine. Three. Better than the zero we had. We're already ahead. Roll endurance points. We had all that money. <laughs> yeah. So we could still possibly get it again. Four. All right. Now we have 24 endurance points. Okay, let's see how many coins we get. Zero. <laughs> we got zero coins, boys and girls. <laughs> Trade off. So now, 
Keep the map. Get rid of the crystal star. I'm just a poor boy. Yeah. I'm just a poor boy. I need no sympathy. So let's roll to see what we get. Yeah. We can always get it again. We know how to get there. And if we want to rethink any of the... Uh, while I'm rolling this up, if any of y'all want to rethink any of the Kai disciplines, leave me a hashtag of which ones you would want to choose instead. Nine. So, looks like we get the gold coins again. So we don't have 19, but we have 12. So hey, not too bad. And now I'm thinking to add... <laughs> you know what? I got plenty. Of... I just now thought of this, so I'm going to go ahead and add it. Give me just a second here. I didn't think this was going to happen this soon. Which is right there, so let's do that. <laughs> there we go. Death count. <laughs> let's make that a little bigger. And then... Over the shadow there. There we go. My shame. <laughs> it's all part and parcel. Okay. So was anyone thinking any different? Thinking like tracking for camouflage or should we just keep camouflage? I would redo the whole thing. Well, I mean, I like six cents. Mine, sh so mine blast already came in handy. So does six cents. I can imagine a scenario where if we can actually face off against the lieutenants, the mine shield will come in handy. Um, I hate to jet. Thanks for the stream. This was fun to watch. All right, Brad. Um, be sure to subscribe if, or um, follow if you haven't. We'll be doing this again uh, next week, Thursday. Every Thursday we'll be doing this. Switch out camo for tracking, is that what you're thinking? Let's give it a try. Obviously we should avoid any ravens from now on. Be strong now yeah there you go we'll have a combat skill of 15 entering in ravens are super mean <laughs> all 
All right. So we have the one meal, 12 bo points in the belt pouch, an axe, six cents, mine over matter, tracking, mine shield, mine blast, map of Summerlin, 13 combat skill, 24 endurance points. Let's try this again. All right. So we're back at the monastery. Everyone's dead. We bid, bid farewell. Promise their deaths will be avenged. We turn away from the ruins. Carefully descend the steep track. At the foot of the hill, path splits two directions, both leading to large forest. forest. Right path into the woods, 85. Left track, 270, 75. And Kai, discipline, 6 cents, 141. I'm thinking let's go back with the discipline. That was useful. I think we should keep with that. All right. So heavy foliage of the northeast, 333. Head south, 56. So... Hashtag one. So, for context, so now we can look at the map here. So, northeast. So, we're trying to get down to Home Guard. Home Guard is to the south of us there, south, southeast. So, that's actually not too far. If we go northeast, though. There are other places we could go that might be like a longer route. But like the shortest route might be the more dangerous one. Plus, we want to run into the dude again. That's right. We want to run into the dude again so we get the star. So I'm thinking 333. Like we did before. There we go. Alright. So we cut our way through the thick undergrowth. Looking up, we see the Kron approaching from the north. So the Kron specifically are the birds. Because we'll probably run into them again. One of the monsters that attacked the monastery. On its back are two gray-skinned creatures armed with long spears. Mountain Gaiax. Okay. Evil servants of the Dark Lord. Back, so the backstory again. Hidden by the trees, you freeze, keeping absolutely still as the Kron passes overhead and disappears to the south. Oh, okay, so they disappear to the south, so they would have been going south. If we went south, we might have run into them. When you're sure it is gone, you move off once again into the forest, so 131. So here is where we run in to the wizard fighting the guy X. Um, so this is the party of guy X. So shouting might not be good enough. So we can either go straight to fighting them or we can try throwing at his head again. So, might have better luck. What do you think? You want to give it another try? Maybe I'll roll better. <laughs> I only had, let's see, 0, 1, 2. I had a 30% chance of, of failing. So, 70% of chance of hitting him is pretty good. Uh, we rolled a 1. So, 0 through 2 means we miss, I'm guessing, because I didn't look at the other page. So, I assume um, 3 through 9 means we hit. So, there's only two options. We either hit or, hit or we didn't. Let's yeet. That's wrong. <laughs> nice. All right. 302.
All right, pick a number from random number table. Okay, zero through two, 110. Three through nine, yeah, so 70% chance. Let's do it. Eat. Four, all right. We get to, our, at this point, our journey is now different. So 285, because we rolled above a three. With a sickening thud, the chunk of marble cracks open the back of the Gaiac's head. The creature drops to its knees and slowly falls forward, down to the ruins below. Elated by your skill, you race forward to aid the young wizard. Turn to page 325. So that was an insta-kill. Yep, and then we have back to here. So basically, we get to skip a battle if we hit him in the head. And then he yells his og dog gog 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 gog. I I can't even. <laughs> uh, he leaves. Gaiac are dead. Young wizard wipes his brow and walks forward to you. His hand extended in friendship. Three forty nine. Let's see none of the damage exactly. Three forty-nine. Young blonde-haired youth. My eternal thanks. My powers are nearly drained. Bainden. Brotherhood of the Crystal Star. Letter was warning the Kai Lords. We were betrayed. A brother named Vonatar explored the forbidden mysteries of the Black Arts. Denounced the Brotherhood. Killed one of the Elders. He is now rumored he works for the Dark Lords. We tell him about what happened. He hands us the Crystal Star Pendant. There we go. Got a track monitor, yep. Uh, you thank him, place the chain around your neck. Maiden, you bids for you farewell. We must leave this place, lest the Gaiax return with more of their lonesome kind put an end to us. I must return to my guild. I bid you farewell, my brother. May the luck of the gods go with you. Hope they will this time. 293. Wave of hand, he leaves. We push through the thick woods ahead. Not gone far when you realize several pair of yellow eyes are watching you from the undergrowth to your left. Suddenly, a black arrow skims the top of your head as a kayak ambush. You must run as fast as you can to escape it. So turn to 281. Alright. Break cover, rat climb for the hill. Change direction, continue to run through the forest, 77. So here's a big change uh, that we can also do. So do we want to try the hill, or do we want to try... I'm going to guess if we deal with the hill, we probably have to deal with a the bird type thing. But we might be able to fight it. Or we can try... Now that we have tracking, we can keep going with 77. That might actually work a little bit better to our advantage. Let's try. Okay. Test, test. Okay. So let's go down 77 then. So the mountain Gaiax are unaccustomed to pursuing their prey through the forest. And you soon outdistance them. When you're satisfied they have given up the chase, you stop for a few minutes to catch your breath, check your equipment. The memory of your ruined monastery still plays in your mind. 
Gather up your meager belongings and push on. Let's change for this one. Change up the sounds a little bit. So now... We can use the Kai Discipline of Tracking. So let's go ahead and try that. Ooh, that's really loud. For some reason, that version is a lot louder. So, page 69, let's track. So you are very near a friendly village. Avoid the gallop brush and turn to 272. Okay, so that's what we decided to do anyway. Keep an eye, watchful eye on the sky above. You move quickly along the track. You recall this route leads to Fogwood. Boom, boom. Uh, reach the edge of the clearing. Huts are grouped in a small circle. There is no sign of the usual mist of wood smoke. All right, so if we have tracking, we can turn to 134. I'm curious how that's going to be different, because I just want to take advantage of all the tracking stuff, since we didn't have it before. We were just kind of blundering in blindly. Using your skills, you detect Gaiac tracks Around the perimeter of the clearing, the prints are fresh, and you can tell that these cruel minions of the Dark Lord were in the area less than two hours ago. So you can be forewarned and decide to investigate the huts, or avoid the clearing and turn to 40. So here's where we get a little... So we know they're not going to be in there. But something obviously completely different would happen if we turn to 40 and bypass the huts completely. Forewarned is something, something. Forewarned is forearmed, I believe is the term. Forewarned, forearm. <laughs> avoid them. So you want to turn to... Avoid the clearing, turn to 40. So, let's give it a try. We only got a spear out of it anyway. Keeping a careful watch on the huts for any sign of the enemy, you make your way around the clearing under the cover of the trees and bracket. Rejoining the track, you hurry away from Fogwood. Turn to 105. Okay. Okay, so all that ended up happening, because we're back with the crow again. So all that happened bef this time is we didn't get a spear. In the distance, perched on the branch of an old oak tree, is a jet black raven. We don't have animal kinship, so we just turned to 335. I mean, we have an axe, so it's not the end of the world. The only time the spear would be advantageous, I think, would be if we end up getting 
like uh, the weapon skill for a spear. But we are getting close to our death. Question is... But I didn't want to see. So, I don't know, we might be able to, like, if we don't approach him this time, maybe we'll survive. So, bird flies off, you check the perch, there was nothing there, so we pay it, turn to page 121. Alright, so we see him. We obviously don't want to call to the stranger, we, don't want to, we definitely don't want to approach him. So the question is, do we call to him, or do we just attack? That's the question. So we can either call to him or attack him. Like, there's no option, apparently, just to leave. If we attack, we might have advantage. Sound generic. Let's try that. Can I think attack? I wonder if we'd have advantage. So we do know he's a bad guy. So it's not like we're trying to worry about if he's good. So. Hashtag attack, I guess. So you know what? Battle sounds. Draw weapon attack, 283. Oh, so that's a, that's what a Drakkar looks like. So 283. You are only 10 feet away or so in the robe stranger and the raven squawks a warning to its master who instantly spins around. You are frozen in your tracks by the hideous apparition of a Vordak, a lieutenant of the Dark Lords and one of the undead. You must fight him. Due to the surprise of your attack, you may add two points to your combat skill for the first round of combat only. Unless you have the Kai Discipline of Mind Shield, deduct two points from your combat skill for the second and subsequent rounds of fighting. For the creature is attacking you with the power of mind force, as well as with a very large mace, or just a large mace. But we have mind shield. All right, so. Okay, we normally have 13. Uh, we get advantage on the first round. But then we also get a plus two for um, Mind Blast, because he doesn't say that he's immune to it. And we don't have to worry about losing points afterwards due to Mind Shield. So if he has a combat skill of 17... We have a combat skill of 17, so our actual ratio for this fight is going to be zero. Which, considering he's a lieutenant of the bad guy, that's, uh, I consider that pretty decent. Yeah. We get our Mind Blast. Mind Shield protects us from his Mind Blast. Um, and we get advantage on the first attack. So there's the setup. So, trusty D10, let's see how it does for us. 
higher the better. Oh, that's not good. That's a zero. Okay. Uh, Lone Wolf loses five. He loses three. So, thankfully we have more endurance points this time. But he loses three. So he goes down... He's got more than us. He goes down to 22. Let's do it like this. Since they don't have a place for enemy... Oh wait. Lone Wolf EP. Sorry, that was EP. I was putting CP there. You know what? I'll, I'll keep doing it like this. So he's down to 22. So second round of combat, we lose the bonus. So now our combat ratio is a negative two. So if we didn't have that bonus though, he would have lost one less. So yeah, we just need a few good rolls. We're doing okay because the nice thing is, is that Negative two and negative one are in the same slot. So even with that, we didn't go down here. So that's good. So this is what did happen. This is what could have happened. It could have been worse. So second round, let's see what happens. Oh! Betraying me. A roll of a one. Oh, no, wait! I rolled zero. In this case, zero is good. See, I assume zero was up here. So first round, we actually rolled a zero. This is actually a 10. Enemy loses 12. We lose zero. Okay. No, I'm going to fix that because after that roll of one, we definitely need it. So we didn't lose any the first round, and he lost 12 out of 25. So that go he goes down to 13. Heck yes. I'm pretty sure it was. Oh shoot, where was my place? Yeah, there it is. I need... One second. I'm gonna grab a magic card to keep my place. There we go. Let uh, Tivesh Sat do my fools hold my place. So he has an endurance of 25 to start. So that second roll, we rolled a one. Okay. Actually, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, because I was used to, with the starting rolls, zero was terrible, but apparently for combat, zero is good. Zero counts as ten. I'm, I'm good with that. So I roll a one for the second one, so he loses two, we lose five. So he goes down... Thirteen. That was first round. He goes down 2, which means he goes down to 11. And we go down to 19, as before. So yeah, we are a lot better off now. <laughs> Third round. Okay, a 3, that's a little better. Not great. But I will take that. Uh, 3, so we both lose 4. Okay, I'm alright with that. We're doing alright. We're down to 15. And he's down to 7. Considering this guy is way tougher than us, this is good. Alright. I want to 
Good number, good number, good number. Ah, that went off, but it is a six. So six. He loses seven, we lose two. Oh, and he's dead. Because it's exactly what we needed. So we are down to 13. But we won. Huzzah! Hail the conquering hero! And Tevesh Sat has left our place. Alright. If you win, turn to 123. Ah, uh, alright. No, mountain. Here we go. We'll say mountain. Alright. As the creature dies, it bo its body slowly dissolves into a vile green liquid. You notice that all the grass and the plants beneath the smoking fluid are beginning to shrivel and die. A large, valuable-looking gem lies on the ground near to the decaying body. Further along the track, you see a large war party of Gaiax running towards you. So do we take the gym? Or do we just ditch it, leave it, and run? <laughs> nice reaction there. So do we take the few seconds it takes to grab the gym, or do we just go, nope, and do we run? I mean, hashtag greed, right? I want that stuff. I need my, need my equipment. I need every advantage I can get. All right, you know what? Let's grab the gym. Let's do this. No guts, no glory. The gym feels incredibly hot and burns your hand. Lose two endurance points. Okay. So we're down to 11. Which means it's probably worth it. You quickly pick it up with the edge of your kayak cloak and slip it into your backpack. A gem that size must be worth hundreds of crowns. But the Gaiax are very close and their, arrow wi and their arrows whistle past your head as you turn and run for the safety of the forest. So, turn to page two. We're not any worse off. It kills us. I'm not sorry. <laughs> so, it didn't say it's special, so it's going to be a backpack item. So there we go. Hopefully we can sell it. And it doesn't uh, betray us by having it. Alright, page two. Alright, as you dash through the thickening trees, the shouts of the Gaiax begin to fade behind you. You have nearly outdistanced them completely when you crash headlong into a tangle of low branches. I made it to be two, right? Pick a number on the random number table. Zero through four or five through nine. Let's see what happens. Okay. Hold on. Five. Okay. 276. We already died once. We have a death counter now. Oh, Alright. Oh. The password, his birthday? <laughs> I don't know his birthday. Although that'll give it away to someone. <laughs> if they know it, I trust them. There's nothing I would hide. <laughs> you mean, as opposed to some sauce thing? <laughs> yeah. Alright. Page... <laughs> Yeah. All right. Page 276. I don't know. Oof. 
reaching for your axe, you manage to hack your way through the tangle of woods and twisted branches to the clearer forest beyond. Your cloak is torn in several places, and your right leg is badly bruised above the knee. Lose one endurance point and turn to 213. I have a feeling that the lower number would have been worse. Like, it may have allowed them to catch up to me. So I'll take that one hit. We're down to 10 now. We're going to need to heal up soon. Healer now seems really useful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alright, page 213. Only when you make dumb decisions, right? Or bad rolls. Page 213. Here we go. You have been trudging through the forest for nearly two hours. The nagging fear that you are lost begins to seem a reality. But we have tracking. Apart from the occasional cry of a cron in the far distance, you have seen or heard no evidence that the enemy in, is in this part of the forest. As you descend a rocky hillock, you see something unusual in the tangled woods ahead. <laughs> Alright, page 331. Ooh, with the illustration, too. Surrounded by thorny briars and closely packed roots, you see the entrance of a tunnel disappearing into the hillside beyond. It is approximately seven feet in height and just over ten feet wide. As you get closer, you can feel a slight breeze coming from the inky blackness. In the other end of this tunnel, if the other end of this tunnel emerges on the far side of the hill, it could save you many hours of difficult climbing, but it could also harbor unknown danger. If you wish to enter the tunnel, turn to 170. If you prefer to climb the hillside, turn to 280. So, hashtag tunnel, hashtag hillside. I'm thinking tunnel. But we are weak. No guts, no glory! Tunnel. All right, let's do it. Ooh, we got something to fight. And that's it, right there. The tunnel is dark, and the air is much cooler than the outside. You carefully advance with one hand on the tunnel wall to aid your sense of direction. You have been in total darkness for three minutes. We need to detect the foul smell of decay ahead, similar to rotting meat. If you have a torch and tinderbox in your pack, you may light the torch and see your, your way ahead. We do not. I'm guessing that was one of the random items we could get. <laughs> what is that? Uh, suddenly, something heavy drops from the tunnel ceiling onto your back, and you fall to your knees. It is a burrow crawler, and you must fight it, for it is trying to strangle you with its long, slimy tentacles. It's combat skill of 17, so it's tough. But its endurance is 7. So it's easy to die. If you do not have a torch, deduct 3 points from your combat skill during the fight. The burrow crawler is immune to mind blast and animal kinship. Oh dear. So this is about to get tough. So, we only have 13, but the minus... Or was it? 3. So we only have a combat skill of 10. It has 17. <laughs> we get a minus 7 on this combat. This is gonna be fun. This is one of those where we gotta roll good. Yeah, it has plus 7, so the total... So 10 minus 17, we get a negative 7. 
So, Tevesh, hold our place. Hopefully we don't die. Yeah. RNGs take the dice. Negative seven. Oof. At worst, we'll lose eight and it'll lose zero. At best, it'll lose seven and we'll lose zero. So that, that's our range. Oh, I rolled a one. I'm about to retire this die. Okay. Okay. We're not dead, but we're at two. Uh, we're at two. We're not quite dead. We just rolled terribly. Oh, zero! Yes, it's dead. Oh, thank goodness. Like the two extremes, a one and a zero. Seriously. <laughs> All right, Lim Duel. We won. We are barely alive. Turn to 319. Hopefully nothing does too damage to us. The slimy creature lets out a long, ghastly death cry and collapses. You are near to panic and scramble to your feet, grabbing what you think to be your belt from the jaws of the dead beast. You can see light in the far distance and you sprint for it as fast as you can. When you finally emerge into the daylight, you fall into a le the leafy ground and fight for breath in painful gasps. Right, we're at two hit points. Slowly sitting upright, you notice that you are still wearing your belt. You had not lost it after all. What you grabbed from the jaw of the burrow crawler was a leather strap with a small pouch and a sheathed dagger halfway along it. You can break open the clasp you break open the clasp to find it contains 20 gold crowns. You may take both the dagger and the crowns if you are able to. Feeling a little better now, better now you gather, gather your equipment together and push on, on eastwards into the forest. So hey. Oh. Why did it hold that? Allow. You crazy... Oh, we did it, you crazy thick. <laughs> I'm guessing Automod does not like you crazy, weirdly enough. Um, I'm going to see if I can allow that for later on. Added to permitted term, you crazy. Okay, so I don't have to do anything. It did it for me. That's good to know. No, I think it should be fine. Type in you crazy, see what happens. Because I think as I added it to per permitted terms list. Yeah, see, there you go. I guess it tries to be overly cautious and then you can give it leniency as it goes on. Okay. You crazy Thacko. I am crazy Thacko. All right, so we got 20, so now we have 32. We balling now. <laughs> balling with two hit points. We headed east a little bit. Okay. How does it feel to be rich and wounded? <laughs> Painful and heavy, I guess. <laughs> All right. Turn to page 157. We're reaching the end of the night, too. Definitely sped along. Alright, 
157. The forest begins to thin out until finally you can make out a road through the trees ahead. The highway is full of people heading south. Many are wheeling their possessions along on handcarts. If you wish to join the refugees and perhaps learn more of what happened in the north, turn to 30. If you would prefer to continue to move south, but under the cover of the trees, turn to 167. So here's our chance to learn some information, I guess. So if this happened to the north. That's probably... So we're back on the main path, so that's probably in Toran. So I'm gonna guess the town of Toran got sacked. And they're heading towards Homeguard. Either way, we're heading south. I think we have to hope for healers. Yeah, maybe someone has some sort of sorry, healing potion, because we certainly don't. You know what? We're gonna die if we do die if we don't, possibly. Damned if we do, damned if we don't, I guess. So, forest day. Let's go with that. So, yeah. Press the wrong button. There we go. Some thick, <laughs> right? Uh, it really would. Okay, page thirty. It is refugees. The people look tired and hungry. They have come many miles from their burning city. Suddenly, you hear the beat of huge wings coming from the north. Kron! Kron! Hide yourselves! The cry goes all along the road. Just in front of you, a wagon carrying small children breaks down. Its right wheel jammed in a furrow. The children scream in panic. If you wish to help the children, turn to 194. If you'd rather run for the cover of the trees, turn to 261. Ooh. So. Chance damage or hide and try to stay alive. I'm towards helping children. Children are children, in that sense. Go out in a blaze of glory or not. Got a little bit further. Die a hero or live. We either die the hero or live long enough to become the villain, I guess. <laughs> Save the children, Mr. Good Aligned. Yes, I've always do Good Aligned. Alright, I'm gonna go to 194. See what happens. You sprint towards the wagon. Well, it doesn't look like we die immediately, so that's good. People are running everywhere in panic as the Kron make their attack. Carrying their poor victims off into the darkened sky. A large cron is hovering above the wagon, and three snarling Gaiax drop from its back onto the startled horses. You must fight them or leave the wagon and run to the safety of a nearby farmhouse. Oof. So we either have to fight or flee. Ooh. We have two hit points. Do we leave the children to die? Or do we chant some good rolls? They aren't that powerful, but two hit points. Yeah, exactly. More than likely, they don't have mind shield. So... We can mind blast. Let's fight. Let's do it. We committed. Might as well commit the whole way. 208. The ghoulish creatures thrust their spears at you and attack. Fight these creatures as a single enemy. So endurance 13. Gaiax combat skill 15. So... Hmm. 
Our total com uh, combat skill will be 15. So, you know, we'll, we'll have a combat ratio of zero. We are evenly matched. So this is okay. I think we'll be okay. And they have 13 hit points. Okay. All right. I just not been rolling well. But uh, <laughs> let's see what happens. If we roll well this whole time, we're at zero. So as long as we roll seven or above, we will survive the first round. That's the question. We have a 30% chance of surviving the first round. <laughs> Hashtag save the kids. Zero! Yes! Now check this out. Twelve. We don't go down any. They go down to one. <sighs> so close. <clears throat> Okay, so if we want to survive this, seven or higher. Seven or higher, we win. 30% chance. You know, I, I threw that down on that. Floor. Not at all. Uh, we did. Roll the three. <laughs> you know what? It's 10 o'clock, just about, here. We died. Yeah, we saved the kids. But we did kill them, too. That's just it. We died, but we also killed them. Because that's kind of how the numbers equaled out. Uh, because... At 5, they take 7 damage, we take 2. So they more die. So it was just more one of those sacrificial fights. But we can start again. We've learned a lot about what not to take, what not to do. Um, we can probably even skip on tracking. Maybe take healing instead of tracking next time. If we had taken healing, we would have been fine. I still think Mind Over Matter will come in handy at some point. Mind Shield and Mind Blast has come in handy, so it's Sixth Sense. Tracking just gave us some extra insight. Good, I'm really gl yeah, I'm really glad <laughs> you had a Mind Blast. <laughs> I'm a dad, I'm allowed to make bad dad jokes. Did. So, next week, uh, I'm going to work a little bit more on the setup. I kind of spent the whole week working on this setup, trying to get everything going, all the notifications and everything, um, and the graphics and the uh, stream elements and everything and whatnot. So I can get some more. I can get some, like, uh, some stream elements notifications for people popping in, how the rules work, uh, you know, that they can use, like... I'll probably put a command for, like, uh, exclamation point rules. So, um, people can get the rules from Stream Elements with that command. Uh, and I believe exclamation point commands gives you a list of all the commands, too, if I'm not mistaken. Moving to Night Shift next week. I'll miss two streams, but should be able to catch up after that. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah, there you go. I don't know why it, oh my nightbot did it too so you can check out nightbots commands or or uh stream elements commands okay so that's doubly useful oh so you missed the next two okay well hopefully we'll get some other people in next uh for the next two so that we have some people in but i will try to save 
I will put in the streams under um, highlights so that they'll save. Um, so if you, for whatever reason, wanted to catch up on how we did um, after your, after your um, shifts, you can do that. So, but thank you for joining me, uh, Lim. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. I'm glad you were able to be here. And I'll try to do a little bit more advertising so we can have uh, <laughs> right on. Yeah, I get that. Um, but yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and I guess I'll see you again in one, two, so three weeks. So if you miss the next two, then I'll see you again in three weeks. Uh, and I'll try to do some advertising, get some more people here. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call it a night. And uh, have a good night. <laughs>